Welcome, everyone. Um, hopefully, everyone can hear me OK. Jason, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, everyone. Real quick, I'm going to switch around here. So we're, we're trying a new platform. Um, hopefully, it's coming across loud and clear for everybody on the other end. Um, but welcome on this Thursday to the Stimulate Your After School Program webinar. Uh, I've been working with the National After School Association for quite a while. Um, on many different aspects with the conference and so on, but let me switch my screen over to our PowerPoint. Give me a second here. Okay, so hopefully this comes across everybody's screen okay. Um, today we're gonna take an hour with you going through some of the challenges that we know you all face in implementing STEM um, into your after school program. Um, it's a pretty daunting task, especially with the current pandemic and the issues that we all face trying to learn, whether it's hybrid or at home or, or in person. Um, so there's uh, uh, quite a few solutions that we can offer you as we go through today. And uh, towards the end, we'll have Jason Lindsay with Hooked on Science doing several experiments to kind of show you what you can do um, very inexpensively with your uh, students. So um, there's that. Uh, myself, um, I started Stemfinity around, um, let's see, coming up on 10 years, end of March, it'll be 10 years, uh, started Stemfinity and looking for ways to make STEM uh, affordable and effective and, and in, um, inexpensive. And so you can see here, you know, 20 years of working with uh, schools and after school programs. I've, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, in person, um, you know, in the classroom hours or at home, after school, I've done a lot with libraries and makerspace, um, but ultimately my goal has been to make STEM accessible. Uh, you know, in, in starting STEMfinity, uh, we start out with very inexpensive tools, um, ranging you know mostly under two hundred fifty dollars, and now we have over uh, ten thousand products from pre-K to, to high school um, that uh, you know range from <laughs> very inexpensive to more expensive. But once you get into more technical uh, components like robotics and and uh, makerspace and um, you know, 3D printing, uh, typically the, the prices go up on those those items. But uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with over 40,000 schools uh, throughout the world um, and helping, you know, kind of create the excitement around STEM and STEAM and, and uh, riding that wave that, that's still going on. Um, but enough about me. Um, let me introduce you guys to Jason Lindsay with the Hooked on Science. He goes by right. Science. Uh, Jason Lindsay's um, started Hooked on Science. When did that start, Jason? Uh, let's see, I left television weather full-time in 2007. So since 2007, I've been doing Hooked on Science. All right, so many years uh, working with students, whether it be um, at school assemblies, which of course with the pandemic has had to change a little bit, but uh, you most likely have recognized him from uh, your, your TV. So he's been on the NBC Today show 16 times. Is that correct, Jason? Yeah, multiple times there in national television doing some pretty cool science experiments. All right, so yeah, that um, all the way to creating his own content and curriculum. Um, he has a lot of free STEM resources, which we'll show you on his website later on. Um, but I think similar passion, but Jason, if you don't mind telling us a little bit about yourself here. Yeah, so basically a scientist, uh, a scientist who loves to help the public better understand the world around us by uh, kind of making it easy for you to understand uh, the science around us and in the world that we uh, kind of navigate each and every day. So I used to be a, still am, a television meteorologist uh, in different parts of the United States from Wyoming to Missouri to Kentucky to Indiana to Illinois to Tennessee, list goes on, got tired of TV weather and decided that it was important to make a difference in the classroom. I noticed kids weren't getting enough science, so I developed uh, my own program called Hooked on Science. Mm -hmm. So since 2007, I visited thousands upon thousands of schools. COVID's kind of changed that a little bit, but I think, you know, with the vaccine and uh, everything that's moving in the right direction, that will change, but I don't think virtual will ever go away completely. Uh, either way it goes, in the classroom, we do mind-blowing science experiments, family science nights. We connect science to holidays, to uh, topics that kids are talking about, like Minecraft, Fortnite, uh, list goes on, because we know that a kid really gets it when they can connect science to the real world. 
to the Minecraft game they're playing, to the holiday that they're celebrating, list goes on. Uh, I still do a little bit of weather uh, as a meteorologist in Kentucky. Lexington is one of the stations I work at. Uh, another one is in uh, Missouri, uh, as well as uh, around the Evansville area, a TV station there, WTV. W-W-E-H-T if you're in the Indiana area. And in Eastern Kentucky, ABC 36. Uh, in Tennessee, I work some with the station in Memphis, Jackson, and so on, uh, doing uh, weather. So when I go into schools, you get a real scientist. I don't just play one, I'm actually a scientist and get to connect uh, science of weather and so on to uh, the classroom each and every day. So that's kind of a little bit of what I do, getting kids excited on TV when it comes to science. And I say kids, we're talking about anybody from five to 105 uh, or even older, uh, getting everybody excited about science on TV as well as in person and virtually. Yes, and uh, Jason, obviously between uh you know, as you can tell what he just mentioned, there's a lot of different avenues. He's working with students, um, parents, educators. Um, he's a true STEM professional and uh, proud to be working with Jason and, and sharing some of his things here uh, today. Um, but real quick, I'm gonna show everybody a, a little video um, of Jason's highlights on national television. So hopefully the sound comes through okay for everybody. Here we go. And... There we go. Amazing. Wow. Incredible. No, Can you Bobby. think science is awesome? Science, science is, is awesome. awesome. There we go. Wow. Look at that. Oh, that was cool. That was pretty so amazing, cool. right? Yeah. That was really it's like cool. Like a little oh, hearing oh, it on there. Science. <laughs> Three, two, one. There we go. Why is that doing that? We have electrons and batteries that are flowing in a path. Sorry, my sound's messed up. So, any apologize. Do you want to let go of the There, let's see. Oh. Touch your nose. Touch your nose. We have our. Oh. That's a love technology, right? Oh. Cool. Awesome. Oh. 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 Mix these ingredients oh. together, and there's the goat right there. Now the Today Show set is. Oh. Whoa! Oh, Wait, look here, 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 you. Yes. Yeah. Oh my, oh, my kids are obsessed. We have oh. eight oh. bubbles. Yeah. Eight. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pause that. Um, <laughs> Sorry about our, our internet connection here, of course, with the live stream and trying to connect some video in there too. So I have no issues with that, but um, hopefully it gives, gives everybody a clear oh, idea we go. of Amazing. Jason's wow. uh, yeah. past work. Um, and that's just a small glimpse of, of what he's done. So um, we have put a little thing in the chat bar uh, to learn about, about you. Um, these are some of the questions I'd like you guys to go through and answer. Um, so enough about Jason and I for a little bit. So we want to learn more about the, the audience we're working with. And so there, there should be a link in there if you want to go ahead and take a um, minute or so to, to fill those out. Um, you should see that in, as a caption as well coming across. Um, so make sure you get in there. And then I, I'm going to go through each of these questions with you and get a, a general feel as to, uh, you know, kind of some of the, the struggles and challenges and, and how you guys have been implementing STEM and STEAM in your after school programs. So let me do that and get out of here. All right. So we'll get to, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so now we should be seeing some numbers here coming in. Looks like we have 44 responses so, so far. So I'll wait for a little bit longer to uh, kind of get a, a, a tally. looks like we have several hundred people on here so uh, we'll have to wait for i want to see at least 100 or 100 plus um 
submissions before I go through and, and give you guys some results here. So uh, let's give it a minute here. And let me see the results. We've got quite a few. Okay, so I'm going to switch my screen over again. So once again, this, we apologize. This is a new new uh, platform we're using. So uh, like many of you, we've tried Zoom and Microsoft Teams and um, Google Meet, all the other ones. But uh, with the large amount of uh, attendees in this uh, webinar today, we're we're trying this new new platform. So hopefully it works out for everybody. But let me go turn this on. And so this is the the webinar poll. Uh, looks like we have 50 results in so far. Um, so first question, let me go in. Uh, do you guys offer STEAM activities for your students? So looks like it's an overwhelming 100% yes, which is great to see. Um, there has been, you know, early on, um, I'd say about five, five years, five to 10 years ago, uh, there was a lot of hesitation, a lot of fear in implementing STEM. Um, it was very, you know, it's just an intimidating name, uh, much like engineering or, or science. <laughs> and so trying to get the educators past that fear has been a big part of what we've been doing, um, which I'll go over some ways that we can help assist with that um, a little bit later on. The second thing is do you use hands-on virtual online activities to address STEAM? Looks like we have uh, half or both and some virtual and some hands-on. So uh, this is kind of a, a common response that we're seeing amongst, um, you know, the, the after school programs that we work with, um, you know, each state has their own requirements as to, you know, whether you can be in person, whether you can, you know, whether it's all virtual, et cetera. So usually it's a kind of a blend of both, which we're seeing a pretty even split there. Um, next question is what type of learning do you think works best with your students? And that's an overwhelming hands-on, <laughs> which is great to see. And I'll show you how effective hands-on learning is. And that's where Jason and I both feel, feel very strongly about the hands-on component, um, especially with all the students doing very much virtual um, over the past you know, nine, 10 months. Um, we, we've seen that there's just a, a, a very strong need for the hands-on component to, to keep these kids interested and excited and, and uh, engaged. Um, what STEAM programs do you offer? So as uh, Mr. Science would be happy to see, we have a 95% um, or 61 that are, are uh, science, that are you know, looking at implementing science. Of course, STEM is you know, technology, engineering, math, at, um, around 65% on average. Uh, robotics, quite a few. Makerspace, quite a few. Computer science. Uh, not too many drones, not too many VR. Um, anyway, so it looks like there's some things down there too that uh, we have STEM and connects, uh, reading, introduction to coding. So yeah, a lot of that stuff can tie in um, with the stuff up above there too. But great to see that science on the core area of STEM um, is uh, kind of main emphasis throughout. Um, next one is, have you noticed the effectiveness of hands-on learning with your students? Uh, so yes, only one person, maybe one, let's see how many we have. Yeah, one person said no, <laughs> haven't noticed the, the effectiveness of STEM. So we'll, we'll show you how effective it can be. Um, and how do you suggest you make STEAM activities accessible for students? And we, we thought that that would be the overall overwhelming response is affordability. Um, because that is, I mean, it's hard to implement STEM when you don't have the, the, the means to, to provide that. So um, that is a major component, which we'll show you how we can do that with some free activities and, and grants uh, to, to access these STEM resources or STEAM resources. All right, so that's a good uh, introduction about you guys. Um, let me go back to our slideshow here. And so we just went through these questions with everybody. Um, but um, real quick, we also are gonna be doing a giveaway um, at the end of this uh, workshop or webinar today. Um, the two prizes we have are the Lego Education Brick Q Motion, uh, which is a brand new product uh, came out this month, uh, which is combines more uh, uh, physical science, and uh, think of sports. So there's a lot of sports type of activities within there. Uh, so it's a great way to tie in the excitement of uh, like simple machines and engineering and STEM and STEAM um, all together with uh, physical education as well and sports. Um, also a new product that uh, was recently launched is called Virtually Science, which is a combination, um, it's actually uh, Jason Lindsay um, 
is working with a company called uh, uh, Beakers. Um, and so between the two of them, um, they've created this uh, virtually science kit, which is, it goes out, uh, we're looking to do it monthly, um, but uh, basically get a, a variety of supplies and equipment for your student to work, whether it's at home or at school. And then uh, once a month, uh, he'll be online virtually, um, as well as Rebecca with uh, um, uh, Beakers, will be online and, and going through some fun activities with your, with your students. So um, those are the two kits we'll be giving away at the end, so make sure you guys get signed up I'm not sorry, basically by being here, you're, you're signed up. So we'll be announcing the winners <laughs> at the end of uh, this workshop. All right. So now I'm going to get into the effectiveness of um, hands-on learning. Hopefully a large amount of you guys have seen this uh, diagram before. It's the learning pyramid. Um, we strongly believe here at STEMfinity uh, to be more in the participatory teaching methods instead of the passive teaching methods. But we'll, we'll start here at the top. Um, with lecturing. As you can see, lecturing is, I'm going to move my cursor over it. So lecturing is around 5% retention um, of the students. So as you can imagine, the typical classroom, you know, the, the kids are coming to you guys after school looking for something different because they've been lectured to all day um, or they've been doing virtual learning um, or reading all day. So you can see these top three things are, are more passive learning uh, approaches and then demonstration. Uh, which we'll be doing some here today um, with, with Jason, but at least there is that 30% retention rate there. Um, our goal is, like I said, to get you guys down the second half, the lower half uh, of participat <laughs> participatory teaching methods. And so within the discussion group, you, the retention of the students is 50%. Um, the main thing here, though, is practice by doing. That's going to be the hands-on learning. So the students have a 75% retention rate by doing the activities themselves. And then if, if you guys are fortunate, fortunate to have a, a student that really grasps onto the concepts and maybe wants to be a mentor, uh, that student could then teach other students. And when they do that, they have a 90% retention rate of, you know, by teaching others on, on those activities or those lessons. So um, this is the learning pyramid. Um, once again, we, we feel very strongly that practice by doing and hands-on, which uh, based on the poll results, uh, looks like you guys are all in the same boat and feel very strongly about that. Um, another thing that we'd like to do here at STEMfinity is to uh, um, kind of break the silos out uh, from STEM. Um, and so right now, uh, typically you'll see science, technology, engineering, math, engineering, art, math, and uh, you know, you're very focused on that. But most of these activities can, can be a blended approach or integration uh, throughout those different areas. So we have some worksheets that we'll be sharing with you guys after the um, webinar today uh, to help you when you're doing your programs on how to um, implement those uh, activities uh, effectively and be cross-curricular and cover multiple um, you know, subject areas within one. Um, but as you guys all know, you guys face many challenges, especially with the current pandemic. Um, you know, it's a never ending, no, it seems never ending, um, you know, the different uh, ways about teaching that you have to, you have to fluctuate, you know, with what the requirements are by your state or city or county. And, uh, but, Overall, these have been some past hurdles that we've seen very consistently. Um, you guys all mentioned affordability is a big thing, so insufficient funding. Um, I know some of you probably have like the 21st Century Community Learning Center grant, uh, which is uh, more of a temporary grant, you know, three to five years. Um, there's a lot of uh, foundations out there that will fund STEM and STEAM, which we have a grant page we can show you later on. Um, and then we'll, um, both Jason and I have some free STEM activities on our website that uh, his is hookedonscience.org and ours is stemfinity.com, but we both have free activities to, to help you in uh, introducing STEM and getting you past that fear of, of teaching STEM. Um, next thing is lack of knowledge about existing curriculum. Uh, so we do have former educators in our office that can help uh, navigate through the 10,000 plus uh, STEM products and resources we have. And, and we're constantly vetting out those resources so we know what works in what environment. And so we can definitely be that source for you in coming up with a, a STEM solution for your program. Uh, next thing is lack of professional development in STEAM. Uh, Jason and I actually just shared a, um, a post with me uh, last week. It was our first training we did years ago in Goldsboro, North Carolina, um, eight years ago. And uh, so we do a, a vert, uh, we do a STEM 101 professional development, which is um, basically uh, goes around what the resources you have. And then we have just uh, launched a virtual STEM 101 uh, program, which is Jason Lindsay as well coming out there, whether it's in your school or virtually, 
um, um, and showing you how to implement the, the, the tools and make them um, kind of align with your current curriculum and, and your goals. And then the final thing, um, hurdle is of lack of partnerships. Um, you'll be surprised, but uh, um, there's tons of engineers and scientists and robotic companies, et cetera, that are wanting to work with students or at least um, show them how they got to where they are. Um, so um, most uh, urban areas, I mean, you have uh, large access to you know engineering companies, et cetera, and maybe having uh, a scientists or an engineer come in and speak to your students, or maybe you're in Florida and have a, maybe a NASA astronaut come in and, and talk to your students. Um, so there's some things there, but it, for the uh, rural areas, um, still, you know, whether it's you know, agriculture, maybe have a, a farmer come in because that, you know, farming is a, you know, it, it basically steam throughout. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're having to, to be a scientist, uh, you have to deal with all the technology and, and harvesting, et cetera. So there's, um, different people in your community, um, in your area that we encourage you to partner up with and, and share some ways that they became, you know, whether it be a scientist or engineer. Okay. Um, and here are the two documents that I can share with you guys after this workshop today. So there's team planning. Um, so this is just more or less breaking it out from the silos. So let's say you wanted to do, oh, I don't know, um, let's say Wonder Workshop with Dash. It's a robotics program. Um, well, within there, it, it, it covers science, covers technology, engineering, art, and math. Uh, within the activities that they have and so you can plug in you know what what maybe that one activity in all the different work areas that it works with within steam and that's kind of goal is to show them it's not just art that you're teaching with that that activity that you're trying to do a, a blended or integrated approach throughout and then also we worked with the company called click to science which you guys might be familiar but click to science is a free online um, stem professional development um, offered for out of school time professionals like yourself and within there, these are just some questions to ask, you know, whether the activity is safe, um, which, you know, of course, right now we need to con you know, be concerned more about, you know, how to implement with uh, current COVID requirements. Um, so there's that. Um, is the activity appropriate for the age group I'm working with? Are the youth I work with interested in the project or topic? Um, so you guys will be able to see this, whether it's aligned to standards, et cetera. So these are things that we encourage you guys to kind of question before you go and, and implement um, any STEM or STEAM resources. Okay, so those will be available later on. But now I'm going to get past the lecturing and demonstrations or lecturing side from my end, which I, I'm sure, you know, you guys are all burnt out with the, the virtual <laughs> uh, demos or you know, presentations. So um, but I'm going to pass off to Jason and we're going to be doing these different activities. And so bear with us. I'm going to try and get this um, to show up correctly, but we're going to be doing these five experiments. And then any questions, feel free to put that in the chat bar as well. So uh, Jason, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So um, I think the best way is I'll just do a quick little glimpse of what the activity is, and then I'll switch to you on the, on the screen. Okay. So this first okay. one, hot ice, hot ice. So let me break it away and put you on the screen here. One second. Do a little balancing act here. <laughs> and let me take this off. All right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How is everyone? I hope you and your family and your students and everyone is safe and well as we continue to battle a vicious virus. There's light at the end of the tunnel now. There's a vaccine available. You know, since March, we have learned one of the most important things to do, and that is wash your hands often, wear a mask correctly, keep your distance, the whole nine yards, all that continues. Either way it goes, this vicious virus has turned hands on science, hands off, if you let it, that is. But there's no need to let it. You know, as I speak to parents across America, across the world, educators, there's three important tips, or at least a few important tips that I give them when it comes to virtually learning, especially when it comes to science. Number one, keep it simple. They don't need anything elaborate, just enough to really get the curiosity going. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're kind of engineered to explore the world around us by using our five senses in science. In science, we typically don't taste a lot unless it's okay, it's a delicious cake, it's a, a pie, it's a pizza, it's a steak, whatever it might be. That's okay. 
but we don't always taste in science class. But keep it simple where they're exploring the world by using their senses. Number two, make sure you're using ingredients from around the house or things they can easily get. You and I both know most communities across America have a what? A Dollar General. So I try to make all of my experiments, which are free, at hookedonscience.org, along with a video with these guides that Bill just showed you, the one about hot ice, uh, by using ingredients you might get at your local convenience store, specifically a dollar store, because I know that every community in America has one or has one close to them overall. So we've got keep it simple, ingredients from around the house, and help the kids understand that science doesn't always work the first time or the second or the third, contrary to popular belief. It can wait four or five, six times. And please, I encourage parents, don't do it for your kid. Let your kid do it on their own and explore and learn from there. So that's kind of helped so many parents across America understand that, hey, I can do science at home as my teacher, you know, as the parents, uh, the kid's teacher sends all this stuff home. We can do it together. My kitchen has turned into a science lab now is what many parents are telling me. So just use ingredients from around the house. Okay, so hot ice is a pretty cool experiment and it uses an ingredient you might have and that is a hand warmer. Now this is a special hand warmer. Uh, I say special, you can get it, let's put it that way. It is one of those hand warmers you'll notice down here it's got a little clickable thing. So when I click that, it creates a chain reaction that causes this liquid to go from a liquid to a solid and it gets hot. Super hot. Not so hot I can't touch it or it burns me, but it does get hot. So this is a reusable hand warmer. It's got sodium acetate in it. It's very important for this experiment. It's kind of like an oxymoron, hot ice. It's two words that kind of contradict each other because we know hot and ice kind of don't go well together. Uh, but what happens is it, the ice part of it is where it's almost like a solid. And then of course, uh, the hot part of it uh, is because it gives off heat, a lot of warmth. It's called an exothermic reaction. So what we're gonna hit here is matter. And if you are teaching the next generation science standards, which are good, they encourage kids to think, and that's important in a, in a world that you really have to think and problem solve and figure things out. Uh, this would cover matter, which typically kindergartners and fifth graders have mastered matter. So by the time they get to middle school, they're able to tell you that matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. It can exist in five states, mainly three, solid liquid gas. Matter is made up of small pieces. You put those small pieces together, the atoms, you get molecules, so on. So you'll notice I've already created one over here, and we're going to pour that on top of this one to create another one. But you'll notice it's kind of oranges, but kind of a white tint to it. Uh, I can touch it and it's not giving off heat because this was done about an hour ago, but it creates a very cool, unique sculpture, if you will, that students can keep adding on to and keep adding on to and keep adding on to. You can measure it, collect data, see how tall you can make it go, so on, measure how much heat is being given off, depending on the, the, the cool technology that you might have at the high school level or the middle school level, and that would be more of when you get back to the classroom on that one. Uh, but overall, that's what it looks like. We're going to pour more on top of it, and when we pour more on top of it, we should continue to grow upwards and upwards and upwards. Again, this experiment here called hot ice. So in order to do this, I have to do a few things. Uh, I've got this, but I don't want to go cutting just yet. Because what will happen is, is when you cut it, it creates um, a one spot that allows the chain reaction to happen. You don't want that chain reaction to happen just yet. So what I have over here is some vinegar and I have some scissors in vinegar. I'm gonna dip my fingers in the vinegar. I'm going to dip my hand warmer in the vinegar because the vinegar is going to inhibit the reaction. It's gonna stop it so that I can open it up and pour it out. That's key because you don't want the reaction to happen just yet, not too early. So what I'm going to do is cut this. Uh, again, I might have the students describe the vinegar by its observable properties. What does it smell like? What does it feel like? Is it wet? So on. What color is it? Can you see through it? Is it transparent, translucent, opaque? Same thing here. Uh, describe this one for me. Uh, that is the hand warmer. Okay, now I'm going to cut across and my reaction didn't happen. So that's good news. The vinegar did what it was supposed to do. Now I'm going to grab this and get a little bit closer and I want you to witness all eyes on the sculpture. Hocus Pocus, are you focused? 
Here we go. We're going to pour it on. And as soon as it hits it, my reaction starts to happen. And you will notice how it's growing. Now that is pretty cool. Now, once I get the entire package emptied, which I have now, I'm going to set it right over here and I'm going to gently touch the side and it's getting hot. The chemical reaction is happening and that kind of reaction that gives off heat, we call it exothermic. Exo means outside, thermic means heat. So you just created a pretty cool experiment called a hot ice, or I did, you're watching, eventually you'll do it. And you'll notice the color change from the old one versus the new one that's kind of stuck right there on top. And it's giving off heat, giving off heat, we call that an exothermic reaction. The opposite of an exothermic reaction is an endothermic, and that's a cold reaction, vinegar and baking soda. But that's a pretty cool science experiment. I've been doing this on TV stations across the United States. Typically, I will do different themes for each season. So this season for TV stations, it's called... Um, Ice cold science because it's winter time. The next one coming up next month will be Valentine's Day science. Don't fall in love with science on Valentine's Day. And then it'll be St. Patrick's Day. And then the list goes on. It'll be spring, then summer science, 4th of July. And I actually have science programs designed around those for in person as well as virtual. So you can find all those at hookedonscience.org. Okay, Bill, I think we're ready to move on to the next one. If you want to go ahead and pull that slide up and we'll talk about that next experiment. Uh, let's see, it's 1231. I need to make sure I stick with my time uh, overall. This next one has to do with creating your very own light bulb uh, out of a few ingredients from around the house, including toilet paper tubes. I mean, when the pandemic first started, everybody bought toilet paper, so you should have plenty of toilet paper tubes uh, lying around the house or wherever it might be. Uh, I'm sure parents can bring them in as well. So this is the toilet paper tube light bulb. This would talk about energy, which is a big fourth grade concept. Energy is the ability to do work. You can't create energy. You can't destroy it. The same amount of energy that was here yesterday is here today and will be here tomorrow. So how do you get it from one spot to the next? It's transformed. The big thing we're going to talk about in addition to energy is light. We know light travels in a straight line until it hits something. Once it hits something, it can do one of three things. Reflect, bounce off of. Refract, bend or absorb, take in. We know that some things light can easily get through the air around us. A little harder for light to get through stained glass and even through our um, uh, little hand warmer earlier, the orange. You could see it was translucent is the word we use for that. And then light can't get the toilet paper tube, it's opaque. Okay, now we got the basics out of the way. Look how I set up everything. Let me try to get it close to my white lab coat here. So you can see right here, I have some graphite, uh, basically lead, although we can't give kids lead, but that's what it's called, uh, from a mechanical pencil. What kind of graphite? Uh, the one that I am using here is 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 is the graphite that I'm using here. I had to build a bridge there. So let's go back a few steps. Around the top, I have electrical tape and that's holding on to alligator clips. And you will notice there's a red one and a black one, and it's going to end up down here to where I'm going to connect one battery and one end of the battery over here. And we should be able to create a light bulb by using this. So inside of my batch of batteries, let's look see how we did this. You will notice all of these batteries, and I taped them together by using more electrical tape. Um, these look like C or maybe D batteries. Uh, these are D, I think. You could use C as well. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Connect them that way. You'll notice one end has a little uh, piece that sticks out and another one that's flat, positive, negative. What's happening on the inside of our battery is a chemical reaction. That chemical reaction is putting a charge of positive on one end and a charge of negative on the other. Once I connect the alligator clip here and then here, I should get a flow of energy. Uh, and then that energy will be converted to light energy and heat because this will get hot. Now, I only have so many hands. I'm not an octopus. But what you're going to have to look at closely is how all of this works as I put everything together. And I'll try not to catch on fire today. 
I'm joking, you're not gonna catch on fire. Okay, I've got everything connected and you will notice the graphite is getting super duper hot, super hot. And I am creating my own light bulb. It's called a filament is what that is. You could experiment with different sizes of graphite. Uh, you could experiment with the larger size versus the smaller size. So those will be different variables. I'm not looking directly at it, but there it goes, it pops. It gets super bright there for a moment or two. It does give off heat, so obviously you wouldn't want to touch the graphite. If you have the younger kids, what I would do is I would put a mason jar on top of it just so they don't touch it. But there's a lot of smoke that's going to be created inside of that mason jar. Uh, again, mason jar set on top. Uh, so it might be harder to see it. Either way it goes, we just transformed chemical energy, chemical reaction inside to light energy and it gave off heat, so heat energy. You could also introduce electricity here, open circuits, closed circuits, the circuit is opened. But when I closed it, I touched one end to the positive side, one end to the negative side, we closed the circuit. The electrons float on a path without any kind of interruptions. We call that a closed circuit. And what happened? Well, we transformed chemical energy to light. Didn't get a lot of sound from this, any at all. Uh, but uh, we will hear in a few minutes when we move to the next experiment. Uh, and we'll still talk a little bit about energy. But here, the main thing was transforming chemical energy to light as well as heat. It would get a little bit warm if I got a little closer up there. You can change it up, use different variables. Again, like I said, different sizes of graphite to see which one works best, which one lasts longer overall. So pretty cool science experiment using everyday ingredients from around the house. Let's move on to our next one, which I think is the sound blaster, uh, is what this one is called. Am I correct on that? Yes, it's called the sound blaster. Uh, this also is an experiment I like to use in my um, Star Wars science. So we create a mega cloud that like rolls across the gym floor or across the actual classroom. We call that Cloud City. We create Han Solo Sound Blaster and so on. And in order to create Han Solo Sound Blaster, you need a few ingredients. And all these are ingredients that you could have or should have there at your local department store. A cup. I use a transparent cup for a reason because we might put different ingredients inside the cup to see if the sound changes. You need a slinky. It has to be metal, by the way. And then you need a pipe cleaner. And I use this pipe cleaner because I help kids understand that there are different characteristics of a sound wave. You have wavelength, you have amplitude, so on. So what they have to do is while we are learning about sound, which is vibrations moving through matter, uh, we're taking matter and jarring it around. Uh, what happens is you get a sound wave, just like an ocean wave, if you will. If you squash it together, you're going to get a higher amplitude and a shorter wavelength. And that will give you a higher pitch sound, like a bird chirping. But if you stretch out that sound wave, you get a longer wavelength and a shorter amplitude, you get a growling dog or a low pitch. So what I typically have them do on a piece of paper is to create a model and Next Generation Science Center, which is all about models too. And they have to take this and form a high pitch sound wave and a low pitch sound wave, draw it on a piece of paper, trace around it, and then label it. That's why, you know, I'm always asked, how's an art drawing different from a science drawing? Well, a science drawing can be just as beautiful and be worth money as well. It's just your science drawing is labeled. Your art drawing is not. Your science drawing is labeled. It's important to label everything when it comes to your science experiment. So they may bend this so and so on to create a sound wave, and then they will trace it on their piece of paper and then label it for me. Here's a high pitch, here's a low pitch, give me examples. Okay, so what I have here is my metal slinky. Let me get a little bit closer and kind of show you how I'm gonna attach it to the cup. I'm gonna take and just set the cup in there, just like that, okay? But it's important that I do this, I hold the top. I can't just hold the cup, because if I hold the cup, it falls apart, okay? So I've got a take, and you could always hot glue this on there if you wanted to, but I like for the kids to kind of engineer it, if you will. So I hold it near the top, and what I'm going to do is drop the actual slinky. And what you should hear is Han Solo Sound Blaster.
and you can move it around. So what's happening is, is vibrations are moving up the actual slinky to the cup, and the cup is amplifying that sound, amplifying that sound so that you can hear it again. So what I typically have kids do is change it up a little bit. You know, we have air, which is matter. What happens if I put a liquid inside? Will it sound different? What happens if I put dirt, a solid on the inside or a rock? Will it sound different? So have them think about different ways of doing the science experiment and so on. Okay, time right now is 40. And I think we have two more experiments to go and I only have five minutes. So we've got to get through this. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the next experiment. And that is called the excellent egg drop. This is all about pushes and pulls. Uh, typically energy, as I've mentioned, fourth grade, matter, kindergarten, and fifth grade. And then pushes and pulls, force, is usually talked about uh, in kindergarten as well as um, third grade, third grade. Uh, so then you get matter, second grade, and fifth grade. First grade talks about light and sound. This is physical science, which is my specialty, by the way. Okay, let me clear off some of this because I really want you to see this egg drop. It's a fun one. And then we'll end on a cloud, not a mega cloud like we do with Cloud City, but uh, a cloud that we can create in a bottle with a bicycle pump. So a push or a pull is a force. Some things require more of a push or a pull than others. You learned that from when you were in kindergarten and it was harder to push the, the wagon full of rocks versus the empty wagon. Uh, by the time they get to middle school, that is your kids, they should be mastering the three laws of motion. An object at rest remains at rest until acted upon by an outside force. An object in motion remains in motion until acted upon by an outside force. That's the first law again. Second law is a little bit more difficult, but by middle school, they are putting numbers into an equation called force equals mass times acceleration. Here's the bottom line for the second law of motion. It's really easy, actually. More mass, more force. That's it. More mass, more force. It's harder to push me than it is a kindergartner. I weigh more than the kindergartner. I'm bigger. Uh, mass versus weight, it's a big difference too. Uh, mass basically uh, is a little different. If you go to the moon, what changes? Is it your mass or your weight? Well, your weight, because weight is dependent on gravitational pull. And you know, there's less gravity on the moon. So mass, basically how much matter you have. Uh, you still have the same amount of matter that makes you up on earth that you do on the moon or wherever you go, okay? But because of gravitational pull, that will change your weight. So third law of motion, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. This is a good experiment that I might do around Thanksgiving uh, called the Thanksgiving egg drop, uh, or we might even do some Easter uh, ones to where you color the water. And this is a neat way, a science experiment to dye the egg. It falls into the colored water underneath. Cool experiment. You can add a little art to it and call it steam. Okay. So how in the world do I get that egg in there? I have to apply a force. A force is a push or a pull. So I apply this force. I get, I'm going to hit the pie pan, but this is important. As soon as you feel your hand hit the pie pan, you got to stop because if you keep going, you're going to knock everything in the floor and break it. Can't do that. Okay. So what you're going to do is hit this, stop the toilet paper tube and the pie pan should go that way. The egg will resist the change. We call that inertia. And then gravity should pull it in. Should. If everything works on the Today Show, we did five of these, five eggs, five toilet paper tubes, one big tray, five glasses of water. And then we went like that. Yeah. And the egg did not break. The water acts as a cushion. And you will notice the egg is in there. All comfortable, not broken. All comfortable, not broken. I'll go ahead, get away from my computer, because this is a thing of water, and it looks like I'm gonna leak out a little bit. So I'm gonna go to the sink over here, pour out some of this water, and then I'm going to dip my hand in, get the egg out, because you may have been sleeping, hopefully not. And then we'll do it one more time, and then we'll move to the last one, which is called a cloud in a bottle. That's on top. This is on top here. Egg is horizontal, not vertical. Egg is horizontal, not vertical, okay? Like that, line everything up. This is a really good one to do near the couch. Joking, three, two, one. Falls right in there. 
Pretty cool. Now, if you're working with kindergartners, preschoolers, you're going to need to hold the bottle, the, the whatever's underneath. This is just the vase. You could use a glass, okay? But hold it because they love to just keep going. And then guess what happens? The kids expect uh, anything, right? Okay, Bill, let's go to the last one here, and then we'll kind of wrap up the hands-on science experiments. It has to do with a cloud, which is made up of tiny little bitty water droplets. We're talking about millions upon millions of them. What I'm going to do is grab an important ingredient for this, and that important ingredient is rubbing alcohol. Or a kid once told me my mom drinks that. Okay, not this kind of alcohol. So rubbing alcohol right here, and this is isopropyl 91%. This is good for the fire rocket when we catch the table on fire. We won't do that today, but you can go to the science archive, video archive and see that one. What I'm gonna do is open this up, and I'm going, this is just an old soda bottle, pour the soda out, uh, rinse it out, because you don't want the stickiness in there. Then what I'm gonna do is spray some of that in there, Notice how much I put in there. Not a lot. And then what I'm going to do next is take my bicycle pump. Now, I've kind of changed this up a little bit. You'll notice I have a stopper on the end. And then I attach that stopper to my bicycle pump so that I can pump air inside of my bottle here. So basically in weather, weather is what happens at a specific time in a specific place. Weather over a long period of time is called climate. Yeah, the earth goes through changes. We get warm, we get cold. We get warm, we get cold. It's important as humans, we're good stewards of the earth and we take good care of it because we don't want it warmer than what it would have been, right? So just be kind to earth, take good care of it. That's the bottom line. But climate over a long period of time Weather over a long period of time is called climate. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is attach this to the top. I'm gonna push down really hard and I'm gonna pump a bunch of air on the inside. We call this high pressure. High pressure means sunshine. High pressure means sunshine. Low pressure means rain, snow, tornadoes, hurricanes. I'm gonna remove my, uh oh, we got a problem going on here. Oh. Well, can't do that one because I just broke the whole thing. So the goal was to actually push a lot of air on the inside. I'll show you what I did wrong. See, I broke the end of it off of there. So that means I have to buy a new piece. It's been used a lot, let's put it that way. So just imagine in your brains, uh, it's what we have to do a lot with virtual learning. Uh, and that is a cloud will form there. So as soon as I remove the stopper, and you can watch this online, as soon as I remove the stopper, a cloud will form. And then when I pump air back in, high pressure, guess what? The cloud goes away and you get sunshine or a clear sky. So it's a pretty cool science experiment you can do when I don't break the equipment. But hey, you know, and I both know that that's going to happen in the classroom as well sometimes. So there are five experiments that I really like to do with kids all across America getting them excited about science using everyday ingredients from around the house. Okay, Bill, I'll toss it back to you now. Well, very good. And well, thank you, Jason. Um, hopefully you guys all saw that. I mean, as you guys all experienced in, in uh, your after school programs, things don't always work out as, as planned, but that the last activity, he has a lot of activities um, available on his website, hookedonscience.org, uh, which I'll be showing here in a minute. Plus all those activities will be available afterwards. Um, after this webinar, we'll share it with everybody uh, to see. But um, real quick, I'm gonna take everybody to uh, hookedonscience.org. I can get this to work and hope this comes across all right. But Jason, do you mind just kind of walking through uh, some of the key features of your website? Yes, no problem. Uh, by the way, you know, because of this pandemic, millions of people have went to hookedonscience.org and it's caused a lot of good problems. Let's put it that way. Basically, what I'm saying is the website's being redesigned because it's being visited so much and it won't crash as much with the new design. So you'll be getting a new design in the next couple weeks, possibly as early as next week, maybe late this week. It could be a little bit longer. Either way it goes, there's going to be a new design. But you're looking at hookedonscience.org. Don't forget, uh, I just posted a picture uh, online of uh, the training here. So I want you to go like that. All you got to do is look for Hooked on Science on Facebook. Uh, Instagram and Twitter. New to Twitter, I haven't used Twitter for a very long time. 
only back since late last year. So be sure to go like that. Encourage your family and friends to like it. I post all kinds of stuff there. Free things, um, experiment of the week, unique science stories, list goes on. So again, make sure you go like Hooked on Science on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so on. But what you're looking at there is the website. The experiment archive is oozing with all kinds of different science experiments that you can try. The guides are for free. And you don't have to be a science expert in order to do science at home. You don't have to be a science teacher either, uh, because I help you with these guides. And these guides include instructions on what to do, how to do it, an explanation, connection to the next generation science standards, and science content that you need to know. And it's on one sheet. You don't want to go through 15 sheets of paper when you're trying to teach after school and teach during the day. You want everything on a one sheeter. Explain it, learn it in 15 minutes, be ready to present it to the kids. And that's what I tried to do. I try to make sure it's easy for you as a teacher, as an after school professional. There's a look, they're all PDF form. They're yours for free, print them out. I put a new one on every single week. Also, I don't use YouTube. I, I just don't feel that YouTube is safe for kids. There's too many directions that they could click on and too many things. So I created my own platform. It's called Science on the Go. You'll see it right there, no ads. And it does not include any kind of mysterious pop-up videos that might happen on YouTube. But all of the Today Show appearances are there. There is Science at Home with a bunch of kids. There's Science Story Time to where I read science books and so on with kids. And there's Science News. You'll have to go back and watch that story about how a teacher in Kentucky uses post-it notes to teach his kids math. And then art at the same time and science um, and his displays are beautiful on the side of storefronts and everything else overall so go check all of that out that's for free and on a very navigable navigatable there we go platform to where you can do it online or even on your phone and so on uh, there's just tons of resources there uh, more on school programs are there um, to where you can see the different programs that are offered, the lab book that's offered as well, that teaches all physical science. Um, you can look at teacher testimonials. You can look at ways to contact me. There's a whole list of my favorite books that teach science on there. It's called Teaching Science Through Trade Books. Uh, you're gonna find all of that there and the website is for free. Encourage your family and friends to go check it out uh, overall. And there are programs on there that go beyond the classroom. So birthday parties, uh, senior science for senior citizens, as well as STEM PD like you're doing right now, that's all done through STEMfinity with Bill, virtual and in person. So again, check out hookedonscience.org and don't forget to go like Hooked on Science on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Sign up for the eScience newsletter as well. That usually is sent out weekly with different experiments in it and uh, updated news and things like that. That's right. it on my end, Bill. Anything else? Very good. Well, thank you, Jason. I definitely appreciate your, your time today and sharing that. Um, yeah, definitely check out um, hookedonscience.org. Tons of free activities. Uh, you know, like I said, Jason's very passionate about getting kids excited about science and STEM and STEAM. And uh, as you can tell from the few experiments we did today, that there's uh, a lot more available on his website. And uh, you know, Jason's there to, to assist you guys um, at, as needed. Um, here at STEMfinity, I'm going to give you guys a quick uh, two, three minute kind of rundown of our website as well. Um, not sure if everybody's visited here in in the past, but on STEMfinity.com, uh, we're trying to make it. Uh, very easy to access all the uh, different tools in, in one location, hence being a, a one-stop STEM shop, which you'll see right here, your one-stop STEM shop. Um, but it's broken out by categories, uh, so science, technology, engineering, math, robotics, uh, STEAM at home, a lot of inexpensive tools and resources that uh, uh, some we you know, went over today. Uh, makerspace activities, uh, whether it's 3D printing or just consumables, um, you know, circuitry, et cetera. Uh, virtual platforms uh, that are, you know, for pre-K through high school uh, summer programming. We have a lot of pre-packaged summer camps that are available for your, your staff to run. Um, so we don't run the camps, it's for your staff to run those. And then the and beyond you'll see here and also over here. So we do a monthly STEM giveaway. Any discounts you'll find are right here. Uh, we currently have um, over 125, I think it's now 130 different STEM brands we carry, uh, which you'll see some of the featured ones down here. So everything from uh, Make Block, Ozobot, Sphero, Lego Education, STEM Sports, 
uh, connects education little bits. Um, so a lot of things that you probably have used um, in the past. Um, and we do have uh, new resources that we usually feature up here. Uh, one that uh, we're pretty excited about here is called Coder Z. Um, with this activity, it's a virtual robotics um, platform. And so I'm gonna show you a quick rundown of that. Give me one second here. Within here is broken out by um, the, the different brands alphabetically. So it's Brown Dog Gadgets, um, Class VR, um, et cetera. But Coder Z, I'm gonna click in here. Uh, these are different bundles. Uh, there's school licenses. Um, there's uh, you know a whole range of things. But with the hybrid approach that um, schools are taking, uh, we put together these bundles that include the Lego uh, Spike Prime with the actual um, virtual robotics. So you're able to do the virtual programming so you don't have to be, you know, every student doesn't have to have a robot. They can test out their virtual robot first and uh, learn from there. Um, so these are some tools, whether it's the individual license um, moving on up, but these are some virtual robotic uh, resources that we would highly encourage you guys to consider um, in the current times and, and trying to learn in kind of a hybrid approach. So there's that, uh, the STEAM at home section, um, within here, you'll see once again, there are more, you know, at home learning tools. Uh, so, you know, like we're actually giving away this Cano computer set where kids build their own uh, Cano computer. Um, we have, you know, a whole range of tools that are available within here. And, and we do, um, you know, if you find things for less expensive, uh, we do have, like I said, former educators in office that can help prepare an accurate quote uh, with discounts. Uh, so you can see um, and most of these are on sale. And so we're, we do price matching that way too uh, for those. Uh, for virtual, uh, one resource that's been very popular is, uh, besides Codergy, is Class VR. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, different you know, goggles and so on that, um, and curriculum to go along with uh, the resources. So uh, there's those to, to choose from. And keep in mind, these are sorted from most expensive and go down in price from there. Uh, so whether it's, uh, Shifu, which is a uh, basically use an app and you can explore the globe and um, different parts of the, um, the world. Um, and then one new resource, which I, I think I mentioned earlier, is called Virtual STEM 101. And so this is with Jason. Um, so he can go online with your, your crew, um, your employees, um, you know, whether you have a bunch of teachers or volunteers that you want to go through and, and show them how to integrate STEM or STEAM. Um, he could do that with your staff. So it's a $400 um, online virtual STEM training, or if you're looking for in-person, um, that's what the STEM 101 one day training is right here. Um, and that would you know, have Jason come out to your location and train your staff on how to best uh, you know, integrate these uh, tools into your uh, curriculum and content. Um, so there's that. Uh, let me go back to the homepage again. But going back to uh, eliminating different hurdles for you guys. Uh, we have created these different links right here. Uh, there's a free STEM resource page, uh, which includes uh, you know thousands of free activities. So these are a lot of our um, partners and um, different companies that are, are excited about, once again, uh, getting kids excited about STEM and STEAM. So you'll see Hooked on Science on here, um, the Army Education Outreach Program, they have an e-cyber mission, FIRST Robotics, different competitions there. Um, and one real quick, one thing I didn't mention with that Coder Z, um, if you're a Title I school, uh, they do have a, uh, there's a million dollar grant from Amazon to go out. So there is some from free uh, robotic competition uh, tools there too, as, uh, as well through Coder Z. But NASA has a lot of free resources. Um, Scratch is a programming language. So these are all available to you um, to get past that fear of teaching STEM and STEAM. And you'll see it's whether it's women in STEM, uh, STEM careers, STEM competitions. So we have it broken out different categories for you as well. So highly encourage you to check out that first um, before getting too far into things. And then we also mentioned affordability as being a major concern or hurdle uh, for your, your um, after school program to function with or implement STEM. And so we have these broken out by state. You can search for your individual state grants. A lot of you have the 21st Century Community Learning Center grant. Uh, so we have uh, past verbiage uh, from successful grants that we can share with you uh, when you're writing these grants. And we have the research to, to support the grant and project-based hands-on learning. And so you'll see there's these are some private foundations. Uh, so we encourage you guys, if you're looking to write a grant, um, 
come come on here, uh, find some uh, one of these grants that maybe ties in with your your goals, and then reach out to us, and we can help uh, provide that verbiage and everything else to tie into the grant and help you and uh, get you the funding. And then also when you come when it comes time to ordering material, um, of course you will find all that within our our website here at uh, stemfinity.com. But that is uh, we got about a minute left here. Um, you'll see some of our featured resources. Uh, whether it be a Curiosity Space School Closure STEM Kit. Um, this is a virtual STEM Academy. Um, a lot of inexpensive, you know, $25 or so uh, kits to work with. And so a lot of tools in here. Um, but I'm going to open up the, the chat board here and see if there is any uh, questions or things that we can go through and, and answer for you guys real quick here. So let's see what we have here. Anything STEM rules? I like that. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, resource, resource is very helpful. Much appreciated. Um, all right. I, um, yeah, so definitely if you guys have any questions, put them on here. Uh, we are going to be sharing all of these, uh, the documents with you um, later on, the STEM planning worksheet, the uh, 15 questions to ask when implementing STEM, um, as well as Jason's uh, worksheets and um, just to tie in with the different standards. So um, a lot to uh, to browse through here. Um, you know, just know that we're here as a, a support system. We know that uh, the very challenging times we're all facing. Um, so whether it be in person, um, at home, hybrid, et cetera, we're, we're here to, to assist. And um, Jason, I'm going to bring you back on here. You there? Yes. How are you? <laughs> all right. So, and it says, are we able to contact you or Jason? Yes. So um, let me actually switch that back to the PowerPoint because we have our contact us page here. Um, can you guys see that? Oh, we switched that on. <laughs> so this is our contact page. If it shows up, yeah. Is it showing up? <laughs> Okay, so this is our contact us page. So um, Jason and I's information. Um, feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Um, and you know, if we aren't able to answer it, we have you know uh, different partners and vendors that uh, are able to assist in answering those questions. Um, but um, I think that's all. Is there any other questions that anybody has for us? Oh, no email. Email you to sign up for our. Yes, yeah, we're going to be emailing to the email that signed up for the webinar. So um, that's what we do in there. Anyways, well, it looks like there's not too many questions, but uh, be respectful of time. Um, we, oh, actually, the giveaway. <laughs> oh, wow. So I almost forgot the main part. You guys are probably like, well, you said you're going to give away a Lego set and a virtual <laughs> science kit. So let me get out of here. Hopefully, we got a, that information, but we'll email our contact information in, in that. Um, but let me. See here, and, and would you mind announcing the winners? So we have Beverly Rowan. You are the proud winner of the brand new Lego Education Brick Cube Motion, um, which is right. Hold on here. Let me pull that up for you. Um, when you go to our website, you just scroll down to Lego Education. Uh, so we we are, we are the provider of Lego education resources for out of school time. And so when you go through here, you'll see there's uh, everything from after school and summer camp bundles um, with, with Lego. There's SEL bundles with, with Lego education. Um, but the Brick Q um, is a brand new resource. And so there's a, um, a more of an elementary and one middle school package. Um, so we'll just click on here. This is the prime. So it's going to be for um, six or eight so middle school. But uh, this is the, the set that you get to choose, whether it's the middle school package or the elementary. All right. So that is going out to um, Beverly Rowan. And so we'll, we'll contact you later on. And the winner of the virtual science box is Maria Ellenberger. So hopefully you're still on here. Um, but uh, the, the virtual science program, let me switch back to that. It is. On here, actually, it's on our home page. <laughs> on the home page, you'll see more information on that right here. And this is a thirty-nine ninety-five set, and like I mentioned before, it's K through five. Um, and when you scroll down, it's going to be Rebecca Fisher with uh, call her Professor Beakers with um, with Beakers, 
And uh, Jason Lindsay with Hooked on Science will be doing a, a virtual event. Um, so this is you know more of a individual student box, and uh, but you could have you know, maybe two students at a time working with those activities. So um, let's work a few minutes over here, but hopefully that gives everybody a clear idea of what uh, what's available. Once again, uh, congratulations to Maria and, and Beverly on those uh, um, those prizes, and we'll get those shipped out to you here pretty quickly. Um, but Jason, do you have anything you want to say before we go? Nope. Just realize that, hey, I know it's tough on us all. We continue to think about you as we all continue to struggle to accomplish one task, and that is make a difference in a kid's life. So we continue to think about you. Hang strong. Before you know it, it'll be over with. It'll be 2022. Yeah, exactly. Well, everybody, have a blessed day. Uh, we appreciate your time today, and uh, um, please reach out to us with any questions, okay? We'll see ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>